In this video, we will discuss company valuation and corporate tax rates. In general, the value of a company is next year's free cash flow over the weighted average cost of capital minus the growth rate, where the total value of the company is its debt plus its equity. For simplicity in our example, we'll consider the value of a company with no growth or no money reinvested in the company, instead all paid out to the stockholders, i.e. no retained earnings. Under those conditions, this equation reduces to the value of the company is the earnings before interest and taxes times one minus the corporate tax rate over WAC, the weighted average cost of capital. We will calculate both WAC and valuation for a large variety of corporate tax rates. Again, WAC is the fraction of the company financed with debt times the cost of debt times one minus the corporate tax rate plus the fraction of the company financed with equity times the cost of equity. Under these conditions, we will assume the interest rate that the company pays on its debt is a constant of 10%, and we will calculate a variety of leverage betas and cost of equity since that is dependent on the corporate tax rate. The leverage beta is the unleveraged beta, in our example assumed to be one, times one plus one minus the corporate tax rate times debt over equity. And again, we will vary the corporate tax rate. Debt over equity, in our example, will also be one. We give a debt over assets ratio of 0.5, an equity over assets ratio of one minus the debt over assets ratio, and the debt over equity ratio is the ratio of D over A divided by E over A, which comes out to be one. We then proceed to calculate a variety of leverage betas, varying the corporate tax rate, and find the leverage beta will go down as the corporate tax rate goes up, since there's a minus in front of this equation. We then use that leverage beta to calculate the cost of equity capital using the capital asset pricing model, where the required rate of return of equity is the risk-free rate, in our example of 3%, the proxy for perhaps a T-bill, plus the market rate of return minus the risk-free rate, maybe the Wilshire 5000 of 13%, minus the 3%, then times the leverage beta. Again, we calculate a variety of cost of equity capitals, and we see that these also go down as the corporate tax rate goes up. We combine these into WAC, and we find that as the corporate tax rate goes up, WAC goes down. One of the primary reasons is because interest payments can be written off on taxes. So we get this one minus the corporate tax rate in front of the cost of debt. Once we have calculated WAC for a large variety of corporate tax rates, we go to our equation for a no-growth company. EBIT is assumed to be $500, we'll say, million dollars. We take that times 1 minus the corporate tax rate over WAC, and we get valuations for the company as a function of the corporate tax rate. So we get EBIT times 1 minus the corporate tax rate over WAC, where both the corporate tax rate and WAC vary as a function over here. We find that while WAC goes down as the corporate tax rate increases, and that increases the value of the company, the overall value of the company, of course, also goes down as the corporate tax rate increases. Since as the higher the corporate tax rate is, the less earnings are available to the company, going all the way up to 100% corporate taxes having no company value. As an example, we consider a corporate tax cut from 40% with a corporate valuation of $2,400,000 down to perhaps a corporate tax rate of 20% increasing the value of the company to $2,759,000. Under these conditions, the value of our company would go up 
by around 15%. Thank you for watching this video.